Hello and welcome to this Excel Tips video. I am Sumit Bansal and in this video, I am going to show you how to combine cells in Excel. Now, there are multiple formulas to do this and in this video, I am going to cover three examples. The first one is to combine two or more than two cells with or without a separator. I would also show you how to combine cells so that you have a line break in the result. And finally, I would show you how to combine text and numerical data the right way. So let's get started. Let's start with a really simple example. Here I have these alphabets and here I have these numbers and I want to quickly combine these. So you can simply select this cell here and use the ampersand operator and then select this cell. And now when you hit enter, it is simply going to combine these two cells. You can also use the concat formula or the concatenate formula. These are just the same formula and select this cell here and the second one here. And these are the two that you want to combine. If there are more, you can have more arguments. And now when I hit enter, it simply combines these two. Now, in this case, it's really simple. I just wanted to combine these two. But what if I want to combine these, but have a, a separator in between, let's say a dash, then again, you can do that with ampersand or concatenate formula. So I select this cell ampersand. And then within double quotes, I would have to specify the delimiter or the separator, which is a dash in this case, it could be a space, it could be a comma. And then again, ampersand and V2. And this gives me this result here, I can copy this for all these cells. If you're using the formula, then you can use concat or concatenate, select the cell here. And for the second argument, you would have to specify uh, the separator, which would be dash within double quotes. And then this cell here. And now when I hit enter, again, it gives me the same result. Here I have the name and the address in separate cells. And what I want to do is I want to combine all these four cells and get the result in such a way that I have the name at the top. And then in the second line, I have the street. And then in the third line, I have city and then state. Now to do that, I would have to combine these cells using concatenate formula or ampersand, but use a separator that gives me a line feed character so that the next element in this formula would go to the next line. So to do that, I would first select A2 and then I would use char 10 and char 10 is uh, something that gives me the line feed character. So I would copy this because I'm going to use this multiple times and then ampersand B2, then ampersand character 10, ampersand C2, ampersand character 10 and ampersand D2. And now when I hit enter, it gives me this and I can copy it for all these cells. Now it is still not in the format that I want. Uh, it's, it's in the same line and I want these elements to be in separate lines. So to make that happen, I would select these cells, go to the home tab and here in alignment, I would click on wrap text. And as soon as I do that, you can see that now it is in the format that I want. Now you can also do the same thing using uh, the concatenate formula. So here, if I use concat, then you'll have to have this here and then Caten, then B2, then Caten, then C2, then Caten, and then D2. And this again is going to give you the same result. So if I copy this down, you can see it still gives me the same result. Now, if you're using Excel 2019 or Office 365, there is even easier way to do this because there is a new function called text join. And with text join, you can easily combine this instead of creating a long, long winded formula. So here, the first argument it takes is the delimiter, which would be care 10. The second argument is it asks whether to ignore empty cells or not. I would go with true. You can leave this empty and by default, it takes true. And then in the third argument, you can give this entire range of cells. And now when I hit enter and copy it for all these cells, you would see that it again gives me the same result. So if you're using Excel 2019 or Office 365, then it is much better to use text join instead. Here I have two different types of data. I have the text data and I have the number data and I want to combine these two and have a, a dash as the separator. See what happens when I do that. I select A2, then ampersand dash in double quotes and then B2 and it gives me US dash 1.253. Now you can see that these two are different. The format is different. And the reason this happens is that 
in Excel, you have a number in a cell, but you can decide how you want to show it, how you want to format it. Now in the backend, the number still remains 1.253, which is correct in this cell. But because I have formatted it in such a way that it shows me this percentage with one decimal point, it is being displayed that way in this cell. But that is not the case when I combine cells, which has text as well as number. So what if I still want to retain the format in the result? In that case, I would have to change the formula a little bit. And here, instead of B2, I would use the text function where I would take this cell as the first argument. And then I need to specify the format. And in this case, the format would be hash dot hash percentage where hash would represent any number of characters before decimal. This hash would represent uh, any number of characters after decimal. And then this percentage would just add the percentage sign here. And now when I hit enter, you can see it gives me the same result. Now, the reason this works is because I have converted this number into a text and I have specified the format in which I want it. Let me show you another example. Here I have the name and I have the date of birth. And let's say I want to combine these two and I want to create a sentence which says, uh, James was born on this date. See what happens. I would first select the name here, then ampersand, and then I would type was born on in double quotes and then ampersand date of birth. Now, when I hit enter, it gives me James was born on 28053. Now, the reason this happens is because again, dates and time values are stored as numbers in Excel. So when you combine text and number, it is going to give you the underlying number and not the format in which it is being displayed. But what if I want to retain the date of birth? What if I don't want this number, but the date of birth instead? Again, I would come back here. Instead of B2, I would use the text function take B2 as the argument and in the format text argument, I would have to specify the date format, which would be DD MM YYY, where DD is for day, MM is for month and YYY is for year within double quotes. And now when I hit enter, it gives me the right result here. And you can change the format if you want. In this case, let's say I want it to be 20 October 1976. Then I can add another M here and hit enter and it gives me 20 October. Or if you want the entire month, just add one more M here and it will give you 20 October 1976. And that's the case for all the cells. So when you're combining text data and number data, just make sure that you also have the right format. In case you don't have it, use the text function to get it. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.